And the French one, Girard team, still in second place with Johnny Chicotto still leading. Bogathia takes the Ferrari back out into the race. So we see Johnny Chicotto still leading. Man who is Italian touring car champion with uh, Schnitzer BMW in 1989. And vice champion in the German series in 1992. Has always been a BMW man since he started touring car racing. And here he is indeed in the BMW motorsport backed Bugatti BMW McLaren. Chicotto will be handing over later to Nelson Piquet, the man who organized these races as Juar rejoins in third place. And Garcia moves up into second. Well, now comes Antonio Herman. He's come in to hand over to Max Angolelli. Angolelli, a man who's a very, very useful Ferrari driver this year, last year. Front runner in German Formula 3 in uh, 95 and 96, but last year sprung on the scene with Ferrari. Brilliant drives, particularly at Monza, where we saw him do so well. Trinidad comes in with the top Porsche, the GT1 Conrad car. He's handing over to Jürgen Barth. And Johnny Chicotto also in pit lane, coming in to hand the Bugatti McLaren over to Nelson Piquet. Bugatti team underneath. Team chief Gabriele Raffinelli. Of course, they won the BMW onslaught at the Spa 24 Hours last year. Bugatti. Out goes Chicotto. And in goes Nelson Piquet. What a man, Nelson Piquet. Three times world champion in the early 80s 81, 82, and 83. Formula 3 champion before that in 1978 and uh, in his Formula 1 career had 23 wins in a 204 Grand Prix and 24 pole positions. And his serious competition career effectively came to an end in 1992 and he had that huge crash in the Indianapolis 500, put him out of racing for some years. But decided to come back with those GT races in Interlagos in the 94-95. Although this is his first race since Le Mans last year when he drove this same car in the 24 hours. Nelson gets the McLaren wound up. Remember there's a pit lane speed limit. Out he goes and back into the race. Fabien Joueur, still in second place. There he is, he gets the board from the Frank Muller team. Let's look at the power differential between GT1 BMW McLarens and GT2 Porsches. Something like 200 horsepower difference. And the McLaren absolutely ideally suited to this tight little circuit at Curitiba. Nelson Piquet leading on his home circuit. For Bugatti McLaren. And in second place, this man, Fabien Giroir, the French driver who is such a star in the German Touring Car Championship at the end of the 80s. Also driving for BMW in those days. But still looking for a top finish in GT racing. Maybe this is going to be the afternoon. He's had a third, but he's not been first or second in the two years. They've been campaigning this McLaren. Well, that Porsche battle still going on. Jürgen Barth here at the wheel in the GT1 Conrad car from Christoph Bouchou in the Labra GT2 car. And Bob Wallach. Also for Conrad. No, Franz Conrad, in fact, taking over that car from Wallach now in the GT2. 
So indeed, that was a shot of Franz there. So big fights going on all around the circuit. Well, it's going to un end unhappily for Conrad and Wallet because they run out of fuel in the closing laps. Those closing laps, in fact, we're into now. Half goes by in fifth place. Overall, top Porsche. Nothing like practicing what you preach. These are the cars he sells to customers, and he's showing just how competitive they still are. But we now pick up on that battle for second place in the closing laps of the race. Garcia at the wheel of the Ferrari. He's managed to get ahead of both those McLarens. Johnny Chicotto, Nelson Piquet car is up ahead of him with Piquet at the wheel, but it's Garcia. In second place for the Ferrari now, and he's leading Joa and John Nielsen. John Nielsen now at the wheel of the West McLaren. And look at John, big John, the Danish driver, who will not take no for an answer. Climbing all over the back of the two cars ahead. He is so determined, he wants to come through into second place. Maybe he's a bit too far behind now to take the leader. But look at that, Joa goes through. What a beautiful move on the inside. But the Ferrari's got turbo power. And Garcia is not going to be put off easily. He just punches the power back in. And look at that. That turbo power really telling. Oh, and John Nielsen goes through, but he looks down the inside. He hasn't got the power to get past, though. And Garcia looking to go through again past Joao. Well, Joao just held up for a moment there by that back marker, and that cost Joao not second place, not third place, but now back into fourth place. So the battle now is between Garcia and Nielsen. It all turns round, and Joao must have wondered what on earth happened then. Look at John Nielsen now, so aggressive, coming up behind the GT2 cars. Really pushing. Just a few laps to go. Incidentally, Labra has moved up into the lead of GT2. Christophe Bouchou and Patrice Gerslard. Taking advantage of the Wallet Conrad fuel problem. And this great lead battle now for second place here in the Curitiba two hours. Nielsen climbing all over the back of the Ferrari. Callaway Corvette making space for the three cars there. Johnny Chicotto has gone on out of sight. Nelson Piquet rather in the car. He shares the Chicotto. Oh, Nielsen, look at that blocking. Fabien Joua, I'm sure Joua will have words about that afterwards. That was a very definite, you're not coming past move there from the aggressive John Nielsen. This looks like Ferrari's day. They're really on form now. And look at that. Yes, the Brazilian crowd rising to their feet for their hero, Luis Garcia Jr., in second place at the moment, holding off those two McLarens. What a fine piece of driving by the young Brazilian. Second Garcia, third Nielsen, and in fourth place, Fabian Joua with the Jurgen Bath Porsche out of sight in fifth place behind them. Now dropping a little bit back from this battle between the GT1 supercars. McLaren, Ferrari, McLaren, and Garcia is the sandwich at the moment, but John Nielsen looking down the inside, and he comes through. Did Garcia have a problem? And he looked like he may be fishing for a gear. Yes, and indeed, Joao has gone through. Oh, it's puffs of smoke from the Ferrari. It looks like the same problems that hit Jean-Marc Gounon during our live coverage of Nagaro last year. The transmission fails, and sadly, Garcia will be pulling off the circuit with the gearbox broken out of the race. So Fabian Joua moving into second place behind Nelson Piquet and John Nielsen will finish in third place. Joua making the most of that moment of fumbling to take the place. Here is Johnny Chicotto, Nelson Piquet's car. Nelson Piquet at the wheel and Piquet heading for his first international win in nearly three years. Checkered flags out and PK wins. And can you imagine just how crazy the 20,000 strong crowd have gone? The Gatsi BMW pit, there is Gabrielli, Raffanelli congratulating Chicotto, and Nelson on his slowing down lap, taking the plaudits of his home crowd. Well, Labra take their first GT2 win of uh, last year. We have Christoph Bouchou and Guslard. Doing a great job, Jürgen Barthe coming in in fifth place. And on the podium, 
a delighted Nelson Piquet, having done exactly what he promised to give his crowd a home victory.